As we know in the previous episode, Rokahara Tandai and Brahman of the three deities have assembled. And now Draken's joining in the fun? The scene begins with showing the traffic jam that occurs on the city road. This is because of the feud that occurs at the crossroads between the big gangs in Tokyo. The drivers are annoyed with the traffic jam that befell them. They didn't know what had happened. But on the other hand, the Rokohara gang and the Brahmin gang look like they are having fun. Toronto said in a loud voice, I was planning to bring Draken in our gang to destroy you guys. But you know what? Thanks for saving my time. Let's just settle this now and here. Then Senju said, I don't give a damn about you guys. I'm just here to get Hanagaki Takemichi on board, before the Kanto Manji gang arrives. Draken said in a loud voice, don't just go around and decide things for us. We are not gonna do whatever you guys tell us to. Right Takemichi. Hearing Draken's words, Takemichi realizes something. That's right. And he remembers his promise to Mikey before he made the time left. Takemichi said, I have no interest, neither in Brahmin nor Rokohata Tandai. Then in a loud voice, Takemichi said, I am only here to defeat Kanto Manji gang's leader. Sano Manjiro. In Takemichi's mind, that's right. That's the reason why I came back to the past. Suddenly the delinquents who were in that place were shocked to hear the statement from Takemichi. Meanwhile, Tirano who heard that looks angry. Are you insane? Are you trying to interfere with the three deities? A small fry like you? Suddenly Draken attacks Tirano. And it makes the Tirano body lift up a bit. Then with great enthusiasm Draken said. If you want to get to Takemichi, you have to go through me. Come on, let's begin round two. Vivo. Before they had time to continue the fight, suddenly a police siren was heard approaching the place. Takemichi panics knowing the police are coming. Then Tirano said, let's settle this some other time. Let's get out of here everyone. Then in a loud voice, Draken said, Sal, I have left the old me in the Tokyo Manji gang. I will never join Rokohara Tandai. Hearing Draken's words, Takemichi looked happy, and it occurred to Takemichi's mind, you never change Draken. Your heart will always be with Tokyo Manji. Just then Akashi called and approached Draken. Then he said, sorry for just standing quietly. Takemichi who saw the incident wondered. Akashi? They know each other? Then in a loud voice Akashi told all Brahmin gang members to leave that place. But before they leave, as seen in this scene, Senju seems to be starting to get interested in Takemichi. So that's Hanagaki? Not only Brahmin and Rokohara gang get out of that place. Just then Draken said, Takemichi, Inui, we're leaving as well. On the way Takemichi said, I'm sorry I think might have said too much. Draken said, you idiot. I'm glad you are still you. Takemichi said, I'm glad that you never changed to Draken. Then Draken apologized to Takemichi and said, there's something big I gotta tell you. I'm currently a member of Brahmin. Shocking news. Why would Draken, a dedicated member of Tokyo Manji, join Brahmin? The havoc between Brahmin and Rokohara Tandai abruptly ended, and now a sudden confession from Draken. The scene continues in Draken's workshop. It looks like Takemichi is thinking about something. So Draken is a member of Brahmin. Suddenly Inui comes and gives cola to Takemichi. There they talk about a difficult day. Then Takemichi asks where Draken is. Inui said, outside with some Brahmin member. Probably disgust about you. Hearing those words, Takemichi rushed outside. But before Takemichi had time to go out, Inui said to Takemichi. I'm worried about Draken. Huh? Why so? Inui said, rather than a plain motorcyclist gang, Brahmin is more like a Yakuza gang, governed by adults. They got bad rumors tailing them too. So be careful. When Takemichi was outside, Takemichi was surprised to see Draken who was arguing with Akashi. You are not listening Akashi. If you drag Takemichi in this mess, 
I will never forgive you. Do not get former Tokyo Manji members involved in this. To Kemichi who saw their bickering, he tried to break it up. To Kemichi said, what were you guys discussing? Please explain it to me. Suddenly someone said, Draken intends to bring Mikey back. Turns out that person is Senju. Senju said, and Brahmin on the other hand, wants to defeat the gang that Mikey's leading which is the Kanto Manji gang. Therefore, we decided to cooperate as we have similar objectives. While lighting his cigarette, Akashi said to Takemichi, Hanagaki. I loved the ambition the Tokyo Manji gang had. It wasn't about wanting to be Japan's number one gang. Rather, it was about wanting to change the era of delinquents. That's very much like Mikey. But the Kanto Manji gang isn't like that. They don't have an ambition. And at this point, it looks like Mikey is going to be the bad guy. And we are here to defeat those bad guys. That's Brahmin's purpose. Then Senju said, Hanagaki to Kemichi. Two big gangs watched over you, as you boldly screamed. I will defeat Sano Manjiro. If you do have such ambitions, please join Brahmin. Brahmin welcomes you. Hearing those words, Takemichi started to think. Since I couldn't gather up my friends, I was thinking if there's any other way for me to defeat Mikey. This could be the fastest way to reach that goal. Draken suddenly said in a loud voice, no way. If you keep trying to get Takemichi involved, then consider me Brahmin's enemy. Hearing those words Sanju looks a little angry. She said. Then. Wanna start fighting here? Takemichi suddenly interrupts. That moment in Takemichi's mind, if I don't make any decisions now, then nothing will change. Therefore, I will join Brahmin. Hearing those words Draken was a little surprised. Then Akashi said, Draken. As much as Brahmin wants to stop the Kanto Manji gang, there's no way we want to fight Mikey. That's why we need both of you. The very people whom Mikey trusts. Facing him without getting in a fight would be for the best. Please understand that. Not long after that, the rain stopped. Then Draken said to Takemichi. Well, that's Takemichi for you. Keep in mind that the only reason we are cooperating with Brahmin is because of our aligning goals. Don't you forget about that. Welcome to Brahmin, Takemichi. Takemichi determined, I will definitely bring Mikey back. Then Senju said, alright. I have decided. Here's Hanagaki. That's when Senju gave his umbrella to Takemichi. Then with a smile, she said, from now on, you are my gopher. Let's meet tomorrow 3 p.m. at Harajuku. The next day, 3 p.m., Harajuku. At that time Takemichi was waiting for Senju, suddenly a girl said, sorry to keep you waiting. Let's go. We're going shopping, and you're going to carry my shopping bags, okay? Takemichi looks confused and wonders who the girl who called him is. Then the girl said, hey, that's kinda rude. It's me, Senju. You promised yesterday, right? Immediately Takemichi was surprised, because Takemichi did not expect that Senju was a girl. Senju looks pissed off with Takemichi. So, you got a problem with that? You are so noisy. Are saying I look like a guy? Takemichi tried to divert the conversation by saying, I mean, you are Brahmin's top, right? Then Senju told Takemichi to hurry away. As Takemichi arrived at the promised meeting place, Senju Brahmin's leader is revealed to be a girl? One of the three deities is a lady? That's so cool. On the way Senju said, today's shopping in Harajuku is because, Takeomi told me to do something that's more ladylike. And here is his credit card. Takemichi wonders about Takeomi. Senju said, yeah, the second man of Brahmin, Akashi Takeomi. Brahmin is a bunch of old dudes so it feels great to have someone my age joining. After that Senju and Takemichi entered a shop. In that shop, Senju tries on some clothes. Then Senju asks Takemichi what she's wearing. Is this seriously cute? I feel totally exposed in this. Takemichi said, yeah, you look good in that. Now that's chic. 
Then Senju tries to move in her new clothes, but Takemichi warns Senju not to do that, because her underwear will show. After that Senju continued shopping at the next store. At that time Senju looked excited about shopping. Meanwhile Takemichi looks like he's having trouble carrying Senju's groceries. In the shop they had just entered Senju tried on a new dress again. And she thinks the clothes she's wearing are really cool. At that time Takemichi tried to tell Senju he couldn't carry the groceries anymore, but Senju looked so busy with her shopping. Seeing that Takemichi started to think for a moment. But, no matter how you look at it, she's really just an ordinary cute trendy girl. Is this really Brahmin's top? Then Takemichi said, by the way, about Akashi, how did you get to know him? Know him? I mean, he is the former member of first generation Black Dragon, he should be in his mid-twenties, right? Senju said, he is my older brother. What, you guys are siblings? Yeah, my real name is Akashi Senju. Kawaragi Senju is somewhat like a professional work name. Got me thinking about Harichio. I think you know him. You know the former Tokyo Manji Gang 5th Division Vice President. Sanzu Harichio. Huh? Do you mean that Sanzu? Do you know him? Senju said. Yeah, he is my second brother. We are the mysterious three siblings. Takemichi said. So is Sanzu in Brahmin too? Then Sanju said, Harichio has no interest regarding me, or Brahmin's top. Even though I'm the strongest, and even when I am endorsed by Takeomi, he is never interested. That's why, he is in Kanto Manji Gang. Hearing Sanju's words Takemichi was surprised, and he started to realize something. He's with Mikey? That man. Now that I think about it, that guy's definitely Sanzu. He has been with Mikey, even in the future. This means, the current Kanto Manji gang is Bonten in the future. Not satisfied with shopping, Senju takes Takemichi to the next store. On the way Takemichi started to think, I'm so glad I joined Brahmin. One mystery is solved now. Sanzu is definitely the key man here. Along with Brahmin's leader. Then at that time, Senju saw the ice cream vending machines, when they saw the machine Takemichi they felt nostalgic. Senju said, oh, you know about it? While smiling Takemichi said, yeah, I really like the choco mint flavor. What, choco mint? Mint and anything sweet doesn't go along. But after trying the choco mint ice cream flavor, Senju was surprised, that's tasty. What is this? A new discovery for me. Sweet and mint do go along in perfect harmony. Takemichi laughs seeing Sanju eat her ice cream, because Sanju looks like she's using a baby pacifier. After finishing shopping, Sanju said, Thanks for today, Hanagaki. It was fun. Brahmin will have a meeting on Tanabata, so don't forget. Alright. Let's get Chakomint together again. Then with a smile, Takemichi said, On me. It's a promise. Anyways, how long are you gonna keep that ice cream stick? Here, give it to me. I will throw it away for you. Okay, catch. After catching an ice cream stick from Sanju, Takemichi suddenly gets a mysterious vision. A mysterious vision where at that time Takemichi was shouting Sanju's name. At that time Sanju lay helpless and said Takemichi had kept his promise had a whole day to get closer with Senju. However, as the day ends, a mysterious vision appeared. The next day, Takemichi was seen daydreaming about the mysterious vision that had suddenly appeared before. Suddenly Draken called Takemichi. In fact at that time Draken invited Takemichi to visit his house. Takemichi felt nostalgic at that time. Whoa! What a throwback! You are still living here? Draken said, can't make a proper living selling bikes just yet. They are helping me out by letting me stay. Takemichi said, you are on the fourth floor, right? Oh, nice memory. After that Takemichi pressed the elevator button to the floor where Draken lived. And again for the second time a mysterious vision suddenly appeared. 
In that mysterious vision Takamichi's clothes are covered in blood. Instantly Takemichi was shocked and looked very panicked. Draken who saw Takemichi acting strangely asked. You good? But at that time Takemichi was silent, because he was still in shock by the mysterious vision that suddenly appeared. What the hell is wrong with me? In the brothel, Draken introduces the boss, someone he regards as a parental figure. Takemichi respectfully greets him. As Draken leads Takemichi down the hall of the brothel, the girls there bombard him with various requests. When Takemichi asks if the girls there are the same as when he last visited, Draken replied, not a single one of them. Guess the world is always changing. After arriving at Draken's room, Takemichi notes that it is larger. Draken explains, yeah, I had to leave the old one, so they gave me this old storage. Takemichi excitedly inspects Draken's bulletin, noting the pictures of himself and Tokyo Manji, as well as Emma. Draken says, I still dream about her. You have to help Mikey. I need Mikey. I can't abandon him. Takemichi realizes Draken's motives in joining Brahmin. Then Draken said, Tell me Takemichi. What is Mikey like in the future? Takemichi said, He looked so thin. And like he'd been sleeping terribly. He leads Brahmin now a criminal organization. He told me he couldn't suppress his black urges. Black urges? Hina was safe. Everyone that should have died survived. Mikey promised me two years ago. I will protect everyone in Tokyo Manji and Hina until we meet again 12 years from now. The future came as promised. But Mikey was left unhappy. Draken said, so it's like that. That guy. He has been looking ahead for 12 years for the past two. So that's why Mikey pushed every one of his friends away. Then shown a flashback of two years ago. At that time, Mikey had beaten Draken, Matsuya, Chifuyu, and Payan, causing them to deeply fear and despise him. Draken said, I don't know about these black urges. But once he pushed us away, we all became better people. Maybe, all this hatred and resentment. Was his way of sacrificing himself to keep your promise? That's moron. Then with a smile Draken said, he must have been convinced, Takemichi, that you were doing the right thing. While walking down the hall, Draken reminds Takemichi that the future will change, as he has joined Brahmin. Although they do not know the coming events, both Draken and Takemichi swear to retrieve Mikey. Just then, one of the girls bumps into Takemichi, spilling tomato juice on his shirt. As Draken pokes fun at the juice's blood-like appearance, Takemichi remembers his vision from earlier and wonders if he can foresee the future. Draken's deep feelings to reclaim the old Mikey. And Takemichi has a new ability? Then the scene changes. Elsewhere, a private conversation happens. The 7th of July 2008. Before Brahmin's gang meeting, Senju and Akashi meet with a businessman. The businessman said, since then, companies started to use gangsters, and have them involved in our businesses. At this point, we don't want to be left out in this practice. Could we have you guys helping us? Senju reluctantly agrees to help. After the businessman happily thanks her, thinking of his company's future success, Senju suddenly lashes out, threatening sabotage if the company involves itself in prostitution. The terrified man agrees and apologizes. Akashi who saw the incident said, Come on Senju, he's our customer. Senju said, I get that I can't expect every business to be pure and clean. But the thought of having Brahmin involved with that trash of an offer pisses me off. Akashi said, The difference between a child and an adult is the ability to make decisions without your emotions interfering. And that's what Mikey does. Hearing those words Senju was silent. Then the scene changes somewhere. At that time Takemichi followed Draken to the Brahmin gang's hideout, seen at that time the two of them were walking down the stairs to the basement. So is Brahmin's meeting gonna take place in this normal looking building? There's a camera. And a tightly secured door. It's as if they're a secret society. When Takemichi entered the room, he was shocked, what the hell is going here? Because that place was a battle arena, 
and it seemed at that time two people were fighting. Then Draken said, B1 Brahmin's underground ring. Wait, then how about today's meeting? Draken said, matches go on here every night. The rich guys watch these matches through a monitor and place their bets. By making a living in B1, these fighters formed a powerful unit. A unit is now known as the strong militant combat gang, Brahmin. And in this powerful gang, a strong figure leads the team, Kawaragi Senju. Suddenly with a loud voice someone said, that's enough. Turn off the cameras. Today's match ends here. It was seen at that time that all Brahmin members greeted the appearance of Kawaragi Senju with lively cheers. While descending the stairs to the ring of the battle arena, Senju said, now then, let's begin Brahmin's grand meeting. Senju walked towards the middle of the battle arena ring, then she raised his hand. And suddenly all the cheers from all the members of Brahmin stopped. And then in a loud voice, Senju opened the meeting, introducing our news member. Please come forward, Hanagaki Takemichi. The 3rd of August incident bloody Halloween, the battle on Christmas, and lastly, the leading man of the Kanto incident. Tokyo Manji former first division captain, and the last successor of Black Dragon. Handing to Kimichi a Brahmin uniform, Senju welcomes him into the gang. From now on, this will be your uniform. Welcome to Brahmin, Hanagaki to Kimichi. Then Senju continued his announcement. The time has come. On 14th of July, we will battle both the Kanto Manji Gang, as well as Rokuhara Tandai. Let's begin the battle of three deities. Amidst the cheers of the Brahmin members excited by the imminent battle. Seen at that time Takemichi was wearing his new uniform, then Takemichi made up his mind. Finally, we're going to meet Mikey. Then the scene changes to Takemichi's house. At that time Takemichi looks like he is thinking about something while looking at his new uniform. Kawaragi Senju. Certainly a different person before. Senju was somewhat childish that day. I wonder what's going on in Senju's head. Suddenly there is the sound of someone throwing stones at Takemichi's window. And the one who did that was Senju. And then with a smile, she said, let's go out on a date. The War of the Three Deities approaches in a week, suddenly invites Takemichi out on a date. Senju brings Takemichi to an amusement park for their date. Takemichi remarks that he was expecting a serious occasion. As they enter the park, Senju is awestruck by the dazzling lights, adding that she has not been there since sixth grade. When Takemichi asks why she is still clad in her Brahmin uniform, Senju explains that the uniform is more comfortable. As they go on various rides, from a ferris wheel to a merry-go-around, Senju displays her innocent, childlike wonder. Watching her, Takemichi reflects on his disbelief that someone like her can also start a war between the three deities, once again wondering about her mentality. Side by side on a roller coaster, Senju tells Takemichi her plan for next week. The War of Three Deities begins on the 14th of July. You and Draken will handle the Kanto Manji gang. Takeomi and I will take care of Rokuhara Tandai. In fact, I can handle this all by myself. Once Mikey and South are defeated, I want to be number one. Get ready. The roller coaster drops, much to Takamichi's terror. But Senju is unfazed. She continues to explain her plan of expanding Brahmin. Senju said, it's not about making Brahmin the strongest anymore. Rather it's to make Brahmin bigger. When the gang gets bigger, more people will get involved. There will be unsatisfiable people. Therefore before growing bigger, we settle the score between the three deities first. After the ride stopped spinning, they both got off the ride. Then at the moment, Senju saw a Tanzaku. In short, during Tanabata, people write their wishes on brightly colored strips of paper called Tanzaku, and hang them from bamboo branches to have them granted. After that they wrote their wish in Tanzaku. Senju wonders what Takemichi wrote. At that time Takemichi wrote, I will defeat Mikey, Hanagaki Takemichi. Senju laughed at Takemichi's wish, then she wrote her wish, 
Then she showed what she wrote to Takemichi. What Senju wrote at that time was, I will protect Hanagaki. Takemichi thought, she's such a straightforward person. Then Takemichi said, thanks to Senju. Senju said, you know I have never done anything like this before. Can we be friends? While smiling and giving his hand for a handshake, Takemichi replied, sure. Well in that case, if anything happened to you, I will definitely protect you as well. With a blushed face, Senju said, dummy. I don't need you to promise me that. I'm strong enough to take care of myself. But, I appreciate it. Suddenly the mysterious vision reappeared. In the mysterious vision seen a wounded Senju on Takamichi's lap. Wait, an amusement park? This vision is clearer than last time. Then the scene changes to Draken's workshop. That's when it started to rain. Inui suddenly came on his motorbike and he said, I have got bad news. Those from Rokohara Tandai are heading to Takemichi as we speak. Meanwhile, at the amusement park, Takemichi is still thinking about the mysterious vision he has just seen before. Amusement park. It's here, isn't it? And then there's the rain. Her promise. That's not the distant future. That's today. A terrible foresight. Will Takemichi change today's fate? Until here this episode, what do you think? Give your opinion in the comments for the next episode. So don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the latest videos from us. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoy and see you later.